Good morning, everybody. How are you? Hope you all, hope you're all well. Today we are going to discuss um, aggregate functions, uh, which of course we try we categorize as uh, advanced uh, select statements. Now these aggregate functions uh, operate on a number of rows. They can also operate on a group of rows. Okay, to return a single. Uh, result for each particular group that is if you have decided to group by a given uh, uh, sorry to group by some set of col or columns the, typically when you're talking of group functions uh, we look at we have the average count max mean and sum in summary this is these are the different um, uh, aggregate functions. We have average that looks at the average number of rows that you have in your column, but it ignores the null value. So you can say average distinct. Average distinct will only look out for those rows that are distinct and return the average for those, or you can do average all. You can do count all. Count all. The count this asterisk means all. So when you say count all, it will count all the rows that you have in your in your in your table. Uh, including including the null value and then uh, this count with braces okay will only return columns that are none uh, that are none null columns in other words when it comes to the count uh, aggregate function it depends on how you're using it the count may include null values or may not include null values now the first count that you see here um, this one here it will return all the all the it will count all the rows including those that are that have none that have null values whereas this count the second count will only count the rows that have the values within them so the maximum maximum distinct again it can return the values for only the distinct rows so it will look at the distinct rows and then return the maximum or you can do maximum all the same applies to minimum and the same applies to the sum so what is key to understand here is the group functions ignore the null values except for this second count um, which can sorry except for this first count which also which counts the null values so the guidelines for using group functions we're saying that uh, the distinct all use uh, the use of the distinct keyword in a group function is um, it helps to uh, exclude all rows that are duplicated so in this case it focuses only on the non-duplicated values the data types that we can use in group functions are the char varchar int float and the date so for all your columns that have those data types, the group functions can apply to them. And we're saying that all group functions ignore the null values. So the guidelines again, uh, we continue in saying that you can use the count, you can use the minimum and the maximum for any given data type that I have mentioned above. You can use the minimum on float, you can use the minimum on date, you can use the minimum on virtual and char. Um, you can use the maximum and count for the for those different types of uh, data types. However, when it comes to the average sum variance standard deviation, these particular functions are specifically uh, uh, considered for numerical data types like end. So the count function has three formats. You have the count all. This returns the number of all rows that satisfies the conditions in your where close so in other words it will count all the rows then the count expression this returns the number of non non uh non null values in other words all the rows that do not that um that have values are the ones that are going to be uh, returned then you say the count distinct expression it will only return the values for the non null Non null values that are actually unique or that are actually distinct. So those are the values that will be returned. So when you look at the general syntax of the group function, it is one thing that you need to take care of or to take note of is that group functions will always be in the select statement, in the select clause. 
please take note that all group functions are going to be in the select clause. So you select a column, then you group the function and you give us the columns that you want to group, uh, to group, uh, sorry, to, to have your function work on. Then you specify the table, where is the, the that is there now the column, and then you group by some column and then you order by some column. So that is the generic syntax of the group function. Then uh, we have two scenarios of using group functions. One, um, applying group functions to an entire result set, or you can apply group function to a, a certain set of a group that you can that you have specified. So if you group by, for example, if you group by last name or if you group by um, first name, then you can have a group function on that group that you have identified. Then um, so if you're applying group functions to the entire uh, uh, result set or to the entire table, this is how the syntax will be like. For example, you can say select maximum tuition, average tuition, minimum tuition from the program. If you realize in that upper statement, you see that we have uh, three uh, three group functions that are going to be applied on tuition. So you'll have the maximum, you'll have the average, and then you have the minimum from the group. Then also the second select statement, we're saying that select the average rank, okay, and then select the maximum, sorry, select maximum program from program where tuition is less than 3.5. 1 million. So what essentially this will do, it will it will give you an average of rank, it will give you the maximum of the program and then, but it will only look at the, those whose tuition is less than 3.1 million. So um, that is the first uh, way of applying group functions to the entire uh, table. Now this one is applying the group function to uh, to a group of uh, columns in your table. So the group by uh, close enables the splitting of the record set data into uh, similar, sorry, into smaller groups. So in this case, you'll see that um, uh, you have, you're saying that select pro code, then we want you to uh, so in other words, the, the columns that are going to be this, the columns that are going to be returned, we're going to return a column called pro code, and then you're going to return a column that is what you call the average tuition, okay, from program, but you're saying we want it to group by the program code. So what essentially this is going to return is you're going to create different groups for the prog code and then for each and every particular group there's going to be an average tuition that is attached to it so essentially that is what that particular statement means so here we are looking at applying the group function to just a specific uh, column the previous if you look at the previous year we didn't have anything to we did not have the group by close Okay, so here we are applying for, to the entire table, but here we have a group by close. So we are only applying uh, the group function to the program. So in other words, it's the program code, the average, the average tuition that we will have um, computed is going to be uh, attached to each and every particular group uh, using the program code. So these are critical guidelines that you have got to uh, you've got to uh, take care of, especially where you're using the group by function, the group by clause, and where you're going to have uh, group functions. Please, I want you to uh, separate. This what we call a group by. Group by is a clause, and then we have a group function that enables us to do different expressions on our data. So the first guideline is all columns in the select list that are not in the group functions must be in the group by close. What do I mean? In other words, this, if you see here, I say select prog name. So prog name is a column that is in the select list. That means even when you are coming, even when you're dealing with your group by, this column prog name has got to be in the 
group by. If you look at the second statement, you're saying select prog name, prog code. These are the columns that you want the system to return. So even when you're looking at the group by, this, these two columns have got to be stated. So that is what that is the first condition uh, with when you're dealing with uh, group by clauses. Then guideline, uh, sorry, we continue and then we say that the group by column does not have to be in the select list. We're saying that this is not essential. So we are saying that we, when you say group by department ID, it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't necessarily have to be in the select list. Um, I'm going to re reiterate on that. Whatever you have selected in your select, whatever column that you have selected in the select list, like what we have done here, it must mandatorily okay, appear in the group by uh, close. However, what the group by close, if you have a group by close department ID, it doesn't have to appear in the select list. So then we have uh, a group function cannot be used in a where clause because uh, why is it so? Because the where clause is used to restrict rows, not restricting the groups. So you cannot have that in your, you can't have a group function in your where clause. Um, we have what we call the having, uh, the having clause. The having clause is used to restrict groups. So what is important for you to know is that the where clause is used to restrict rows, whereas the having clause is used to restrict the groups. Guide, sorry, you can group by more than one column. Okay, you can say um, group by first name, last name, uh, G etc, etc. So it's not limited to only one group. But um, if you re if you look at that select statement, for example, if um, select first name, last name, some in years, some years in the school from student group by first name and last name. So we can as well include another attribute another column under the group by under the group by um, close without having to necessarily reflect it in the select statement okay so now um, this is just um, this is just um, a quiz that I want you to go and try out and see what uh, what you'll be able to return as a result. Then we have the having close. We have the having close. Like I have earlier mentioned, I said that the having close is used to restrict groups. Okay. So in other words, and and it it is it's mandatory that the having close must come immediately after the group by. That is, if you intend to use the having close, it must come immediately after the group by because we have said that it is used to restrict the groups. So, for example, if you want to find uh, the maximum number of years for each student, but show only the students that have the maximum years in school that are more than 15, then this is the select state, sorry, this is the statement that you're going to use. So we are saying that select registration number, maximum in bracket, the number of years. So we want to get the maximum number of years, but we wanted to get it from the table called student. We're going to group by registration number and then having maximum number of years that are greater than 15, okay? So that you can try also, you can try this out, but that would mean that you'll have to create another column years in school. And the years in school here, you're looking at either two years or they have spent 15 years in school or 20 years in school. So essentially it has got to be a numerical value. Okay, so we are saying that an example of a select statement that that utilizes all the clauses. If you look at this select statement, it utilizes all the clauses. You select the num you select the columns you want to deal with from a table where the last name, okay, not like in other words, it should your last name the the last name that you have. Uh, sorry, the column last name, whatever values that you have in here should not be. It, they should not have, it should return only the only the values that do not have ma in between them. The group by the last name having a, a, a salary, 
when you create the sum of the salary, it should be greater than 30,000. And then you say order by the summary. So it is imperative that you know how all these things work. Thank you very much.